650. This is your morning in eight minutes. A major search and rescue operation in Baltimore, Maryland after the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed into the Patapsco River. Yeah, take a look. This is behind us. This is a live look at the scene there. Absolute carnage there. Nothing left but debris. Crews looking for about seven people this morning. They've rescued two so far. One is okay. The other one in uh, in pretty bad shape this morning. Several cars went into the water after a ship hit it. Take a look at the video showing the moment the the ship hit the bridge. My goodness, Whitney's. You said it earlier. It was like popsicle sticks falling down. Just how quickly the entire bridge collapsed there. Dive and rescue teams searching for victims. We're going to continue to follow this story all morning long with updates on that search and rescue. And this morning, the FAA is investigating a Knoxville plane crash after a pilot went into the Tennessee River. Thankfully, that pilot made it out safely. This all happened around 730 last night. The small single engine plane crashed into the Tennessee River near downtown Island Airport near Ions Nature Center. The pilot was the only person on board and he is safe this morning. The FAA is leading the investigation to find out what led to the crash. And this morning, a Maryville man charged for his involvement in the January 6th Capitol riot is due in court for trial. He's accused of planning to kill dozens of FBI agents, including agents right here at the FBI Knoxville field office. Edward Kelly, one of nearly 900 people charged with crimes relating to the attack on January 6th of 2021. Kelly was charged with entering the U.S. Capitol and assaulting an officer. FBI investigators say Kelly discussed plans to kill law enforcement who worked in his investigation, even made a list of targets. Court records show a witness provided the list of 37 names. Kelly faces multiple charges and is set for trial this morning in Knoxville Federal Court. And a Maryville man is due in Blunt County Court this morning on homicide charges. He's accused of stabbing a man and his son. Police say Brian Noble stabbed John Salvati Jr. and his son, John III, several times in some sort of dispute. This happened back in September. Noble is charged with homicide and attempted homicide. He's due in court for hearing this morning at 9 a.m. in Maryville. Meanwhile, this morning, KPD needs your help finding a wanted Texas man who was last seen in Knoxville. Take a look at your screen. This is Patrick Hostetter. The 41 year old is wanted for multiple felonies, including gun charges and suspected drug distribution. Hostetter was last seen in the Merchant Drive area last Wednesday. If you know where he is or where he could be, call Crime Stoppers. And this morning, Crime Stoppers need your help finding multiple theft suspects, including two men police say were involved in an armed robbery. If you know any of the people we're about to show you, call Crime Stoppers. You could get a cash reward. Take a look at your screen. KPD needs your help finding these two. They're wanted for an armed robbery that happened in the McDonald's parking lot right behind the Walmart on Walker Springs Road. If you know them, call the number at the bottom of your screen. We also have it inside your WVLT News app. And KPD needs your help finding this man. He's accused of stealing a woman's wallet while shopping on Kingston Pike. Police say he used her credit cards in a nearby warehouse store, spending more than $4,000. If you recognize him, call Crime Stoppers. Again, that number's in your WVLT News app. A Department of Homeland Security investigation is underway this morning into music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Yeah, several of his homes raided yesterday. U.S. officials tell CBS News that the raids in L.A. and Miami Beach are part of a possible ongoing sex trafficking investigation. In recent months, the 54-year-old's been accused of sexual misconduct in five different civil suits. Diddy has denied any wrongdoing. There was no sign of Diddy himself. At least two people were arrested. And today's students from 23 East Tennessee counties will show off their science and engineering schools. Yeah, middle and high school students are getting ready for the Southern Appalachian Science and Engineering Fair. Students will get a chance to give a presentation of their projects in front of judges. The competition is broken up into two divisions, middle school and high school students. It starts this afternoon at 3 o'clock on UT's campus in the Student Union Ballroom. The award ceremony is next Tuesday in Strong Hall at 6 o'clock. And happening today, I know we've all been waiting for it. The Girl Scouts of the Southern Appalachians is set to kick off the Great Cookie Competition. They're holding the first ever Great Cookie Tasting with Yeehaw Brewing. To mark the end of Girl Scout season, East Tennessee's favorite cookie will be crowned from the Great Cookie Competition. Our Whitney Kent is representing Adventurefuls. Tickets include one flight of beer with four Girl Scout cookies and light appetizers, $750 per girl per year to fund the Girl Scout experience. 70% is covered in cookie sales the other 30 comes from donors. Proceeds from the event will be used to bridge that funding gap. It's all happening from 6 to 8.
It is 6.54. We want to get a check of your first alert traffic with Kristen Allen. Good morning. It's looking good out there so far as you're getting out the door on this Tuesday. Here's a live look there at I-40 out at Paper Mill Drive where you can see we've got that traffic flow here in West Knoxville, but everybody's moving along just fine up to speed so far. I-40 out of I-275 looking pretty good. We've got be mindful of those wet roads out there you could run into as you're getting going. Take a look here at your big picture, though. Main roads and interstates are all clear. Want to take a quick look at those drive times, though. 75 South, Raccoon Valley Road to 640, taking you nine minutes. 640 West from 75 to 40, looking pretty good, taking you three minutes. And then 40 West from Asheville Highway to Paper Mill Drive, taking you 10 minutes this morning. And those extra minutes are definitely going to count today. Maybe even just taking your lunch so you don't have to get back out in this because this is just the leading edge of rain continuing to move east, continuing to knock those temperatures around a bit. We were in the low 60s just a couple hours ago. Knoxville now 57, 59, Maryville 53, Washburn to 54 Oneida. I think we spend most of our day in the 50s in this rain, and then we've got a small window to warm up because we're just bringing this leading edge east. Think of these actual storm cells as moving east northeast. So it takes about an hour for it to move over to the next county. That'll get you Gatlinburg some more rain here over just the next couple of minutes closer to Dixie Highway 730 and Greenville 737 with more filling in than the rest of the day. So I mean, really the hour by hour coverage shows you we're up here through the midday and early afternoon, then it tapers late afternoon to evening. So that's why I think we can have that small bounce back to low 60s late afternoon with a high of 62. Those gusts still kicking up, but winding down in the afternoon. So that 100% coverage of our area and rain and storms through midday. Again, those gusts in Knoxville are around 30, but you actually get closer to that 50 mile per hour range on the plateau and even 80 mile per hour range in the mountains. So a lot going on with this one Front, below and through town today. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. And of course, that break until next week coming up on the CW. All right, Heather, thank you very much. We do want to leave you here with another live look in Baltimore where a ship has crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge, sending it plummeting into the water below. Search and rescue operations underway as we speak. We'll continue to follow the latest coming up on WBXX, the CW Knoxville.